All right, pal, so this is how I set it up. I've got my uh, head here that I'm going to be painting the facial hair on, and I've created over here um, four little individual um, patches of hair, so each one of these is going to have its own texture um, and its own look. Uh, now for this, I just left them flat, but it is better if you curve them a little bit just so you don't get any uh, uh, instances where you look at the model and you see it flat on and the hair disappears. So I normally put a little bit of curve into those. Uh, it's also best if you unwrap these before you start. Uh, that way when you create them all with the painting, uh, every one that you paint will be unwrapped as well. Um, now just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to change the color of each of these. Uh, just so that you can see the individual hairs or the individual patches on the model. Um, and how they're being distributed uh, in a random manner once they're uh, painted. So I'll just go in and paint them uh, all these different colors here. So it's going to look a little ridiculous at first, but um, you'll kind of get the hang of it here once they're painted. So where you want to go is uh, up here into the Ribbon Modeling Tools, Object Paint. Um, now by default, <clears throat> the Object Paint is set to paint with selected objects or paint with objects in lists. So we're going to paint with objects in lists. Uh, we need to add some objects to the list, and so I'm going to select these four guys here and say Add Selected. There's my four planes. You can see that it actually changed the order of them uh, when I added them from 2, 3, 4, 1. Um, and so I'm going to add those, and then I'll close the list here. Uh, and I can make sure in the drop down here that they are in the, uh, in the list. Currently in the list, it's only listing the very first, um, the very first plane. And so I'm going to say All Randomly. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow it to pick uh, from that list randomly any of those guys. Uh, the next thing that I want to look at is paint on, and currently we're paint on scene, which means if you go and paint here in the world, it's actually going to paint on the uh, on the backdrop, which is no good. So I'm going to drop this down and say selected objects. Now when I select him and I select the paint mode, it'll paint these four things onto him. Um, over here on the right hand side we've got a lot of alignment tools. Now I'm not going to really play with those yet um, only because I, I actually want to paint a stroke onto the model before I go and, uh, and change the alignment. So what I'll do is I'll do a test stroke on him and then I'll go and adjust the alignment and the, uh, the settings here uh, once I can see them on my model. So I'm going to hit the paint now button and what I'm going to do is I'll, uh, I'll zoom in here on the head and uh, maybe I'll start with the sideburn here and I'll just paint a stroke down. Okay, so the first thing we're noticing is that they are embedded into his head and it painted two of them. It painted the brown one and the blue one. So what's going on is the distance between them um, is too far. So that's this guy here, the spacing. Now, as long as I don't paint another stroke and I don't click anywhere else, if I change these settings, um, they will apply to the stroke that I just did. And so if I drag this down, like that, you can see that it adds more hair, or more of those little cards. Uh, the other thing that I should point out is that the uh, the pivot points on these four planes uh, are all situated in the very top center here, um, and the pivot point is where the attachment actually goes on this guy. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that alignment. Um, if I go and look here, I'll, uh, I'll actually turn the head into transparency mode so you can see what's going on. So some of them are being embedded inside his head, um, and some of them are, uh, are poking out of the surface here, um, which is not quite what I want. And so now I can go and play with these settings here and uh, change the way they're being distributed. So we've got uh, translation, rotation, and scale, uh, and each of them has a little bit of a setting that you can do. There's also the, uh, the offset, which uh, will embed them or pull them out. Now, if you set this to zero, the pivot point should be on the model, um, which is a little difficult to see here. Um, in fact, you can see here, these ones on his cheek, they're, they're not on the model. It's been pushed out a little bit. Uh, I'll leave that for now. I'm, I'm okay with them being embedded a little bit, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave that for now. And I'm going to go adjust more the, uh, the scale here. So I'm actually seeing that there are a little too many of them, so I'm going to decrease that. You can see that the order is quite random. we got orange, blue, uh, probably another orange, a blue, a red, a purple, a blue, an orange. And so it does do a good job of randomizing that. If I go into the uh, settings here... I can pick the axis upon which they are painted. Um, and so this does a good job of uh, altering how they're going to, uh, by default, appear on the model. And so uh, Z turns out to be the, uh, the proper alignment as default. Um, you can align to normal and follow stroke as well. So uh, with follow stroke, if you curve your stroke, uh, the hairs will actually naturally curve around 
the uh, the model as well, but I'm not going to change that. Um, the next section here is the scatter settings, and so you can actually pick to scatter those a little bit so they don't all start exactly at the same point. Um, something like that. Uh, the W here, I don't want to change too much because that's going to pop them in and out of the model. Uh, so I'll leave that at zero. The U and the V, I'll scatter them just a little bit just so that you don't get a straight, straight line of hair. Uh, that tends to look pretty bad. Um, going into the scale settings here, right now we're doing an even distribution. I can do random, which is going to scale them randomly, and here's your scale factor. So they're going to scale at a um, minimum of 20% of, of what's here. Uh, or sorry, not 20%, 20 times what's here. Uh, and, and a maximum of 200. Oh, no, that is percentage, sorry. Uh, 200%. And so you can see if I scale this down, we can actually alter how big by default they are. And so something like that. You know, you want to kind of play with this until you've got your range in the area that you want it. Um, the ramp here, I've got it currently set to random, so it's going to random them. If I ramp it, it starts at 20 and ends at 200, so you can see that first stroke was tiny, and then they got bigger all the way along. Um, I like doing random, especially when doing hair, because it tends to uh, to keep them pretty good. Now, that one thing you want to make sure, too, because they're all using the same texture, don't vary the scale too much, because what you'll end up happening is um, the one that's smaller is going to look like little tiny baby hairs, and the one that's thick is going to look like big bristles. And so um, try and keep those fairly close together. You want to have them um, far enough apart that you're getting some variety, but not so far apart that it ends up looking unnatural. Uh, good. Okay, so once you're done with that and you are pleased with how they're being uh, distributed on the model, all you have to do is just go and hit the OK setting. Now, once you click that little OK button, every stroke I do is going to inherit all of those, um, all of those settings. And so, if I go and do another stroke here and here and here, you can see that each one of those um, is doing exactly um, the same thing. It's randomizing it every time. And so, uh, here you can see that the stroke. Uh, I started at the top and went down. It's uh, inverting them, and so I'm going to undo that one. Apparently, i got to go up this way. Um, kind of thing like that. Um, and then if I was going to do facial hair and whatnot, I would bring these scales way, way down. Um, so here, let's do that now. I'll bring this down to, let's say, 20 and 30. And you can see that that's actually going in and changing every one of these ones as well. Um, that's because I've this first one got okayed, and now that I'm changing these numbers, it's going to change every stroke since I hit the OK button. And so if I undo a couple of times here, that's going to undo my strokes. Um, and so now every one of these hairs is going to be uh, quite a bit smaller. In fact, that looked a little too small. I'm going to go a little higher. So 45 and 55. Uh, and now I can do his, uh, his mustache here. And so even that's going to look a little ridiculous. Uh, and you can actually stroke. Whoops. you got to make sure that you do go the right way. Um, higher and higher and higher. Um, so generally when I do this, I'll start at the bottom and then add another row and then add another row and then add another row. And you end up with something like that. That's looking a little ridiculous. Whoops. And so I'm just going to okay this. I'm going to turn off the paint mode. Um, now what I like doing now, again, because these aren't actually fitting in where I want them to, I'm going to turn rotate on and I'm going to rotate locally. And uh, what this allows me to do, I deselect my head here, again, because of where that pivot point is, it allows me to grab, let me freeze this, just so I don't select his head, it allows me to grab each one of these hairs and rotate it out based off its pivot point. Now, because the pivot point is at the root of the hair, all of the hairs will just naturally stand up for you. And so you can actually go and puff it out. Again, these are all really flat, and there should be some kind of an arc to them in order to make it look a little bit better. Um, but that is in essence, how I go about doing this. Uh, and I've used the same technique for uh, the entirety of his head, um, as well as, uh, um, you know, all sorts of varying furs. And uh, like, like I said, uh, I did a tree this way, doing all the plants, all the uh, leaves on the branches. Um, and so, yeah, it ends up becoming a, a pretty quick and easy way of uh, going in and adjusting them. Uh, and if you do it after they're textured as well, I mean, you'll, you'll see the end result instead of seeing um, all of these ugly planes here, and so that makes it a little bit easier as well. Cool. Yeah, so that's uh, that's all I do, man. Nothing more than that. Hope that helps.